On the Total Theater Tony Show, we have another guest critic, very, very excited and happy to have the chief theater critic of theatermania.com. He's the former editor-in-chief there. He also writes reviews and features for In New York and Wear Magazine and CityTour.com. He's a member of the Drama Desk. He's a member of the Outer Critics Circle. And because he's also a member of the New York Drama Critics Circle, super prestigious there, he is, in fact, a Tony voter. So very, very excited to have on our Tony special, Mr. Brian Scott Lipton. Hey, Brian. Hey, David. Nice to talk to you. Great categories that uh, that you've chosen to talk about. Very excited. So, so let's get right to it. You wanted to talk about actress in a play, and the, the nominees are Laurie Metcalf for The Other Place, Amy Morton, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Christine Nielsen for Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike, Holland Taylor as, uh, well, the only character in Anne, and Cicely Tyson for The Trip to Bountiful. Brian Scott Lipton, take it away. Well, yes, David, it is a great list, and I have to say, um, the Tony Committee had a really tough choice this year because it was a wonderful year for actresses. Um, there were at least eight or nine really worthy performances, and I don't think we get to say that too many years. To then narrow it down to these five extraordinary women was really a challenge. And I think one thing that's so exciting about this group is that there are actually two women from close shows, Laurie Metcalf, of course, from The Other Place, and Amy Morton from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And, you know, there's sort of an old saw that people don't remember shows that are no longer playing, but the committee has proven in this and in other categories, as we'll talk about, that that is the case. If you do really good work, you're remembered at the end of the year. And those are two really strong performances that, frankly, I think, were they still running, might have an even better shot of winning, especially, I think, Laurie Metcalf, who had so much buzz for her work. On the other hand, a lot of Tony voters may not have seen their work, and there is a favoritism toward uh, usually people still running on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other three candidates are more likely to uh, dominate this race. Christine Nielsen, Holland Taylor, and Cicely Tyson. Who do you think has um, the inside track? Who do you think is going to win? I'm going to put my money on Cicely Tyson for a number of reasons. Just the sheer fact that this woman who is, I mean, there is some argument about her age, but whether or not she's 79 or 88, um, she's not 88. To on, yeah. To take on such an incredibly demanding role um, and to do it with what is such enormous ease and grace and strength is a feat among itself. As an audience member, as a, as a voter, you can't help but be blown away by that actual achievement. And it's sort of fascinating, too, because she is taking a role that has, was written for a white actress, William Gish, and has been traditionally played all these years by white actresses. And yet there's nothing in her performance that isn't true to the part of Carrie Watts. It is her first Broadway appearance in 30 years. You know, given her age, probably one would suspect her last Broadway appearance. So I think if you put a lot of those factors together, you'd have to be a kind of hard-hearted Tony voter to overlook her this year. But in your heart of hearts, leaving aside the, these extraneous factors of how old she is, maybe she won't be back on Broadway, would she be your choice as Best Actress in a Play this year? I, I'm really torn because it's all, you know, such incredible work. I have to say I have an incredible soft spot and truly a, a true sense of admiration for Christine Nielsen in Vine and Sun and Masha and Spike. And while I know there are people who felt that she should have been in the featured category. Um, I think the Tony Committee made the right decision because her part is really just as integral to the play as uh, Sigourney Weaver and David Hyde Pierce, her above the title co-stars. Sonia is really at the heart of the play, and, and in terms of stage time, I think has as much to do. And I think it's a remarkable performance that mixes the outrageously comic, which uh, Christine has proven time and again she does as well, if not better, than anybody else. And also just incredibly heartbreaking. There is a scene that has been much written about where she has basically a monologue where she's on the telephone with somebody calling her for a date, uh, something that has not happened to her possibly in her whole life. And those few minutes are among the most stunning I've probably ever seen in a theater. When I watch those few minutes in the second act, I think I turned to my companion and said, 
there's an award-winning performance. I love that. See, that scene was so wonderful. I, I did get to see the show on Broadway, and that whole monologue on the phone, I thought, actresses are going to be doing that for years, but I don't know if they'll ever do it as, as well. But we have to move on with um, Brian Scott Lipting here, because you have another category to talk about for this year's Tony Awards. It's Featured Actress in a Play. The nominees are Carrie Coon, who is afraid of Virginia Woolf, Shalita Grant in Vanya and Sonia and blah, 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 Judith Ivy, the heiress, Judith Light in The Assembled Parties, and Condola Rashad in The Trip to Bountiful. Brian Scott Lipton, your thoughts? Again, we have two people from close shows in Carrie Coon, who was just stunning as honey in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and the brilliant Judith Ivey, already a two-time Tony winner, who was uh, the shining light of the heiress. So again, kudos to the Tony committee for not forgetting these women, even though they're no longer presently on stage. You know, the most interesting thing, in a sense, is that we have last year's winner, Judith Light, uh, nominated again. And while I think it's a fairly rare occurrence, I haven't done all my research to say that to win a, a Tony two years in a row, I'm not positive anybody's ever done it, to get to your inevitable question, I think this is the year history may be made. I think Judith Light will take the Tony again. Her work in the assembled parties, um, although in some ways her character is slightly similar to the character she played in other desert cities. The work is just spot on. It's truthful every single second. It's completely believable. She has also become sort of a, a beloved figure in the community. Judith has an incredibly warm giving person uh, is uh, giving to her fellow actors who works a lot with charity, who shows up for everything. And while that, that is only a small reason anybody should ever win a Tony, I, I don't think it hurts. She is actually probably or very likely going to get my vote. I have to say, I did love all the women in this category as well. Um, Carrie Coon, I have to say, closed. I mean, I have seen probably at least half a dozen people in my life play Honey, who's a friend of Virginia Woolf, is a very seminal play for me. Um, and she was the most believable person in what I think is a difficult role I've ever seen. First time that, as I said to somebody, and as I said to Carrie, actually, it was the first time in my life that I haven't really wanted to slap Honey, because very often that character is so kind of almost pathetic and self-pitying that you just kind of want to hit her. And the first, this was one of the first times I thought, oh, I feel really bad for this girl. Shalita Grant, hilarious, and Mona and Sonia, taking a character that's sort of slightly ridiculous and that could be so over the top or so completely farcical and grounding it just enough that she's believable and yet hilarious, but I think it's hard to win for comedic performances. And I have been a huge supporter and fan of Condola Rashad, who, um, since I first saw her in Ruined at Manhattan Theater Club, I actually did something I was never did. I waited after the show to meet her just because I wanted to express my admiration. Now, very, very quickly, Brian Scott Lipton, last question for you. What was your favorite show of the past season? It could be on Broadway or off Broadway. What was the best thing you saw? I mean, on Broadway, I just say the revival of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, the revival of Pippin were probably my two favorite shows. Mm -hmm. um, as an original piece of work, uh, Vanya and Sonia, Amash and Spike, and the Assemble Parties were actually, I think, two of the best plays I've seen in, in many years. Oh. Broadway musicals, not so much. Um, I think the best musicals actually this year came from Off-Broadway. Um, Here Lies Love, which is currently at the Public Theater, is I think a remarkable piece of work, an, an immersive theater experience that just really dazzled me with the stagecraft and Natasha and Pierre and the great Comet of 1812, which has just reopened after a small run at Ars Nova and the much larger specially built space called Casino in the Meatpacking District. It's a nearly three-hour sort of opera. Um, it's also just, I think, a remarkable theatrical achievement. Um, and while neither of them maybe would be right for Broadway, I would say those are the great musicals, but certainly the four musicals nominated here all gave me pleasure. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Brian Scott Lipton. Again, you can read his theater reviews at theatermania.com and also in Where and in New York. Look for Brian Scott Lipton because, as you can see, he's passionate and he knows what he's talking about. And we thank him so much for being with us in the neighborhood. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Happy Tony season to everyone.